It may surprise you, but Apex has a lot of cool little hidden details that you've probably never noticed. Like secret connections to Titanfall, a secret gun that's not even in the game, and a potential teaser for more rev abilities, and the two skins with Jiggle Physics on Loba. But one hidden detail that stayed from Titanfall 2 is the fact that you can see other enemies if they phase at the same time. So if a ray phases, you can actually follow them into the void by phasing as well. This also works with portals. Another thing is one of Ash's heirloom animations is actually inspired by a meme. Before her heirloom came out, everyone was requesting her heirloom would look like this. And lo and behold, when it came out, it had this animation, which is absolutely awesome. Props to Respawn on that. Another thing about heirlooms though, whenever you're holding Mirage's heirloom as Mirage, it forces his goggles to go down so you can get skins that look really unique because not many people are used to the goggles being like this. Also, when he's skydiving, the goggles also go down. A very interesting thing though, what about a hidden gun inside Apex that you can't obtain but you can only see? Well, in this Bangalore pose, she is holding a P2020, right? No. If we compare it to a P2020, these are not the same weapon. This is in fact a P2011 from Titanfall. Most likely being a reference back to Bangalore's Titanfall days, and this is straight up a gun we can't use in the game. But one thing we can use in the game is Horizon's pen, because in the lobby, she actually plays an animation where she writes on her hand. And it turns out, if you can see her hand in game, you can actually see what she was writing, and it was actually math equations, I think. I, I don't know, I fail maths. But you can see these doodles on her hand whenever you heal or use her heirloom. But this next thing, I guarantee you probably don't know it, because this is one of the most niche secrets I know. Because Rampart has a secret gaming console in her default skin. Are you confused yet? Because if you stand above Rampart and look down, you can actually see in the neck compartment, she has a controller, which has buttons and a D-pad, which is obviously pretty unusual, and it basically makes a game system controller, allowing her to use part of her armor as an Xbox controller. I guarantee a lot of you didn't know that one. But one very interesting thing is the animations the legends have when aiming down sights, because every single legend has a unique one. But Bangalore has the most interesting one, because she is a trained soldier. Whenever you aim down sights and walk with her, She's very specific, darting around, checking every single corner, and being extremely professional. But when you get someone unprofessional and aim down sights and walk like Mirage, well, he's certainly not being as precise and soldier-like as Bangalore, so these animations definitely give the legends a bit more of personality. But one major way to give a legend personality is through their heirloom. It gives a lot of lore about them and a lot of facts about them. And Fuse is no stranger because in two of his heirloom animations, it confirms that he's in a relationship with Bloodhound. The first animation is Fuse showing off a pig that Bloodhound gave him, which obviously is like in a tribal style, which is very related to Bloodhound. And the second one is whenever Fuse flips his heirloom over, it shows his initials and Houndy's initials in a heart, which is kind of cute. One not so cute thing though is War Crimes. And I would say the Thermite Grenade is definitely War Crimes. And there's an interesting thing. Whenever you inspect the Rampage, it shows the inside of the Rampage and it varies what it looks like depending on if you've charged it with a Thermite. Here's what it looks like when you've not charged a Rampage with a Thermite, it's empty. And then here's what it looks like when there's an active Thermite in it. It, and then this is what it looks like when there's a spent thermite in it. So this allows for several different variations of an inspect animation. Speaking of inspect animations, the Bangalore heirloom honestly has some pretty cool ones, but one detail you may not have noticed is that she has bottle caps attached to the sheath for her heirloom. This would otherwise be pretty unnotable, but it suddenly made sense when Newcastle came out in season 13, because Newcastle also has bottle caps attached to his default skin. And if you don't know, they are brother and sister-in-law, and this relates to law where before being deployed to the IMC, their family would have some drinks and keep the bottle caps to remember that day, which clearly they've both done. One thing you maybe haven't done on Bangalore though is realize she has a special unique G7 inspect animation. Because it is kind of her signature weapon, whenever she inspects it, she has an animation that only plays when she uses it. And she kind of spins it and does tricks with it. And Bangalore isn't the only one with a unique animation. Watson also has a unique animation where she shocks the Havoc into turbocharge mode, which is pretty cool and it shows her electric abilities and a relationship with the Havoc, I guess. And at one point, because Watson has a a lot of shock abilities, they did used to affect Pathfinder whenever she resed him. As a few years ago, whenever Watson would res Pathfinder, his screen would mess up because of the electric, but that doesn't happen anymore, unfortunately. I guess Respawn accidentally removed it. One thing Respawn didn't remove, though, is Revenant's old tactical, because you know he used to send his tactical out of his arm. Well, for some reason, on Revenant Reborn's new model and all of his skins, despite not using the silence tactical or being able to use it, it still has the hole in his arm where he dispenses them. But one cool skin feature is with 
select Valk skin, she can actually take the helmet off him. She can only do this in lobby idle animations, and she can do it with her birthright skin, her season 10 battle pass skin, and also her anniversary skin. And all of these give the skins a new look, because it shows them without the faceplate or helmet, which is pretty damn cool. But one other interesting feature of skins is the fact that on the Pathfinder Peacekeeper, there is binary code. And if you translate this binary code, it actually translates to kill Pathfinder. Despite being written on the skin, that's based around Pathfinder. But that isn't the only cool feature related to skins, because a lot of the skins have major roots back to Titanfall. For example, the Wraith default skin and the Bloodhound default skin both have Titanfall related icons on them, because you can see here and here they have this icon, which is the G10 icon from Titanfall. So maybe Wraith and Bloodhound are more experienced as pilots than we expected. Also, Watson has a skin with the Ares Division logo on the left shoulder, which is a faction from Titanfall 2, and also, the Wraith skin with the weird mask has the Titanfall logo on her shoulder. So a lot of the legend related skins that came out in 2019 had a lot of Titanfall references and I wish we saw more. But we are not done on the Titanfall skin references because Crypto has a skin called Fish Sticks which would otherwise be pretty unnotable but if you go into Titanfall right now you can actually also get a Fish stick skin for your pilot. So also Crypto and the pilots have a crossover skin too. The fish knows no bounds apparently but one thing that does no bounds is apex maps and in the outer bounds area on broken moon you can actually see this like weird technology in the sky and this is actually an artificial atmosphere that has been created around the broken moon map to make it livable and provide oxygen which is a nice little nod to the actual law of the map in the firing range map though one interesting feature added recently was the fact that every single weapon now shows your skin so it gives more value to skins i guess because you can always see them whenever you enter the firing range and if you have the horizon heirloom while being in the firing range you should check out this because horizon's heirloom actually has braille on the bottom of it which is a way to display text for visually impaired people that they can feel with their fingers instead of reading with their eyes pretty cool although i'm not sure if the braille is actually raised on this heirloom if you're addicted to skin gambling though this one might be known to you but every single pack has a unique exit animation so whenever you finish opening a pack it can either walk off to the left walk off to the right jump off or even blast off like a rocket which adds a bit of variation when you're gambling like a degenerate here's a good tip though if you're ever stuck in the titanfall and apex universe, if you own an R97, the SMG from Titanfall 2, you can actually use the mags from that in an R99, the SMG from Apex Legends, because as you can see on the R99, it's actually using an R97 mag. Sorry if that confused you. And if it did, let's give you something that's easy to understand. For some reason, in the last few years, Respawn have decided that they're going to age up the Legends. As in the strange decision in Season 16, Respawn decided to update the wiki of every single Legend to add one year onto their ages, which begs the question, Question. In like 30 years, are legends actually going to change appearance because they're aging up, or are we just going to ignore that part? One thing we can't ignore though is mythic skins, and the Bloodhound mythic skin actually had a really cool secret in it when it first came out. It was actually based off two different pilots. The helmet was partly based off the Jack Cooper helmet because you can see the visor actually is very similar in how it looks, and also the skin has an arm much like the AWOL pilot, which just makes me want proper, proper pilot skins. One thing you may want in your skins though is jiggle physics, and uh, here's one from the start. This Lobus skin and this Lobus skin for some reason have jiggle physics in the head broom, which is like the only place we actually see physics like this in Apex, which is pretty strange. One thing that is a bit more strange though is the fact that Ash has a face under that mask. For some reason, her mask is classed as a bone, so she can actually take it off. And if you break the boundary of the game just a little bit, you can see her face from time to time. And it does vary in between skins sometimes, but for the most part, it's pretty uninteresting and she looks like this. I do wish Respawn gave us a pose in the future though that did show a face because it's there why don't they use it and sell it? Like how they sold the Wraith heirloom recolor, which came with a brand new animation, where Wraith opens a document based around her, and there's a note saying, my favorite ghost. And this is actually a reference to the fact that Watson actually saw Wraith before the Apex game started in the lore, and Watson thought Wraith was a ghost. For this next thing though, I just think this is a pretty cool detail. Whenever you throw the Maggie Ultima on water, the pads actually lift up the water, and it shows in the particle effects, which is a really cool small detail. And when I was trying to record this, this guy was trying to kill me, but the foot 
Cottage was so clear, I just thought I'd use it anyway. Like, he could not get me. But enough about Man Maggie. What do you think of Rampa? Because you may not know, but she's pretty much present in every bit of the Apex games. Because she made the Rampage LMG and her logo is on it. But she also made a huge selection of skins and a lot of reactive skins. And on these skins is also her logo hidden in random places. And a lot of these skins were made before Rampart was actually released. So these also acted as a little teaser to Rampart's release, which is pretty interesting. And the final feature that I think is a bit silly rather than small is the fact that Valk's base skin is the only skin that isn't lore accurate. For some reason, in every lore animation, Valk always uses her helmet, making it what should be her lore accurate default skin. But because Respawn sold the helmet in a skin, unfortunately, they can't do this. And I'm sure this is definitely going to make a lot of Apex players mad who want that cool ass vibe helmet. But what are your thoughts on these? How many small details did you know? Comment down below and subscribe. Do it and I'll do more of this.